Our next guest is a Grammy Award-winning musician, UNICEF ambassador, and author of the autobiography, Spirit Rising, My Life, My Music. And she's also an, an amazing international performer. Here with more on her upcoming concert at Carnegie Hall is artist and activist, the legendary Angelique Kajo. Welcome to Arise. Hey, I'm happy to be with you guys. We are Thank happy you. to have You're you. looking fresh and nice and everything. <laughs> and I, like I saw that. you. <laughs> beautiful. I love the accent. It's Yo, well, so beautiful. Well, I saw you guys. You coming in with somebody holding the microphone oh. like a tail, right? <laughs> oh. like, See, what, stay, what happens in the green room stays in the green room. Nah, <laughs> you, you can't be having somebody following you. You got to be ready to go. All the time. That's mm. a very right. good point. That's a very good point. So talk to us about the Carnegie Hall concert. It's not your first time playing there, but what's it going to be like for you to be back wow. on that stage, at that I legendary love stage? I love that place. Mm -hmm. It has... It ha you have the feeling that all the people that have been there before you are talking to you and you come in, wow. telling you do it right. Mm -hmm. Because this is where you empower people. So the show is about paying tribute to my role model, Miriam Makiba, mm -hmm. the first Pan-African artist ever. And um, she has fought so much for that continent, her image, mm -hmm. the image of our continent, the music and the beauty and the strength of our mm -hmm. continent. And I'm just following the legacy, the footstep, to bring this concert to tell the young generation there are so many music that have molded your parents, this music is molding you too. Listen to it, come and join in, wow. and Mar see what Africa is about. And Marilyn what? Makiba was such a huge influence mm -hmm. on the continent, Absolutely. and you as a young girl. Absolutely. What impact did she have on you, both as a person and as a musician? I think the, the, the first impact she had in my uh, psyche it was, you can be an African woman, yeah. have a career internationally, and be respected. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you know where it is, when you start doing music, when you're playing traditional music, it's a different story. When you start doing music, you're perceived differently, you're perceived you perceive as a prostitute yes. or I mean different kind of name. She gave me that pride to stand tall in my shoes and hold my microphone and my head up and say, guess what? I'm gonna do it. You like it or not, I'm doing it. Yeah. And you actually had the opportunity to perform with her. What was that like? To I share always the tell stage? people when you say you love somebody, you have a role model, mm -hmm. be prepared. Emotionally is a shock. Mm -hmm. And I did her opening uh, for a concert she was doing in Paris at the Olympia Hall. And I met her, she walked on stage after my sound check, and I was like, oh. <laughs> And then now. she goes, brace yourself, it's okay, everything is okay. She has that grace, that smile, and that. Wait I'm like, oh. She rendered you speechless? <laughs> you oh, yeah. are seldom speechless. <laughs> I know, I just like, it was so much a shock for me that I get sick the next mm. day. I was just like, I could not believe somebody could have told me that one day I would be on the same stage, I would meet her this up close. Mm -hmm. I could not believe it. So we became friends pretty much. And she, I mean, we used to crack up laughing. First time I went to South Africa, she cooked. I mean, the what amount did she cook? Of, so much dishes. <laughs> oh. She looked at me, she goes, you're too skinny, you gotta eat. I come for lunch and I end up for dinner. I did the whole day eating. She goes, you gotta wow. eat. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna die eating here. Wow. What do you think her greatest legacy is? Her greatest legacy is to the world and to us as African is the pride of us, our culture. Mm. Is also, she reached out across the board to every different kind of music. Mm. She sings in Arabic, she sings in Indonesian language. She sings in so many different languages. When she goes somewhere, she doesn't only present her as an African daughter, she presents herself as an international artist that can sing music in anybody's language and do mm. any type of music. And that's what I love to do too. I so, think that's what your fans love about you as well, because mm -hmm. you're able to sing in many tongues as well. You Absolutely. sing in your native language, you also sing in English, a bit of French sometimes Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, and Portuguese too. And sometimes. Portuguese as well. And I know that your album Eve has been incredibly well received, mm -hmm. and you dedicate it to the African woman. Why was it important for you to celebrate the African woman? Well, it's important to celebrate the African women because they're never asked in the media, in the Western world, to talk for themselves. Mm -hmm. They are represented, we always on, on, on a negative side, all the time. There's nothing that we can do that can be in, empowering for other people. We are all either seen as victims or as just, no, we have nothing to say. And it's not true. The African women are the backbone of that continent. Mm. Women across the board, doesn't matter where you are born, you carry your family, you carry your country, you carry the world. And they're always, every time I go there, they always want to share the experience with me. They laugh, they smile, they just like, 
it's just a bowl of fresh air and love every time in the market. When I get to the market, I'm like, oh my God, I wish the world can see this. So I wanted the world to hear the voices. I want the world to know that behind every face that they show, they forecast on the news and put that stigma and that label on them, first a smile, first resilience, first beauty, first elegance, yes. the way they wear the African fabric, the way they just hold themselves. They are so proud, sometimes I'm like, I hope I keep my pride as long as they do, yeah. because that, that's what they are about. They are about resilience. You yeah. can fail, you can fall, yeah. but the most important thing is how you, gra you, gra you grab yourself from the bottom of the, of the ground and rise up and project yourself in the future. Mm. Wow, and this is Powerful. some of the inspiration and power that you deliver in your book, Spirit Rising. Why was it important for you to lead readers on the life journey that you've taken? Well, I wanted to write a book about recipe because I love to cook, that's another passion mm -hmm. of mine. And when I arrived, the publisher said, we would like to hear the story of your journey because you have done so much from a poor country all the way to Carnegie Hall. And I decided to do it to empower young kids. Well, how do you go girl. from communist Benin to Carnegie Hall? How does that happen? It happens with a lot of determination and a lot of work. Mm. Because you realize that when you sing it, music is the most possessive mistress that existed. Oh, wow. But once you, 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 it's, you have the passion for it, you have to know that only your beautiful voice is not enough. You mm. have to have a brain that follows it. The choices you make, the opportunity that is presented to you, the people you meet, and how you put yourself in, that, in the position where people say, wow, we want this voice to be part of our life. I mean, to write this book, for me, it was important because the young kids today need things to hang on to, mm -hmm. especially in, in the community of black people across the board, mm -hmm. around, around the globe, we have been pounded that we cannot achieve anything. Yes. And then we have been brainwashed beyond brainwashed and we keep that attitude going on. We cannot sit down and blame people that brainwash us to tell our story. Yeah. We mm -hmm. got to tell our story. And there's one story told about Africa. It's about time we all start flipping the coin and telling the story of the other side of the coin. Mm -hmm. That's why this book is important for me, for everybody to read it, especially the young kids here. You were talking earlier with, us, uh, with one of your guests about the beauty of women, how we, women, we can, we, can, we can rescue women. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to give women pride. Mm -hmm. We have to give them respect for themselves. When you respect yourself and you love yourself, you don't want to please anybody. If you're happy with who you are, mm. people can be skinny and wear size zero. What the hell I care? Yeah. <laughs> if I, want, I wear size 10, it's my problem. If I feel uh -huh. good in my body, I'm cool. <laughs> I mean, if I don't want to wear makeup, I'm cool. For you guys, I put makeup on, I hate makeup. Uh -huh. But that doesn't make me, make me want to fit in, in a, somebody's agenda. I don't, I don't let anybody Tell me what I have to do. Have you always been this outspoken? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I, would I would imagine growing up in an African household, that wasn't always well received because, oh, my, you know, no. children are seen, not heard, and I especially that. young girls. Absolutely. But the thing that, about me that I'm, I'm lucky about, that I talked about a lot in the book, is how my mom and dad have decided that our home was going to be a free speech zone for every single human being mm. on this planet. Wow, that was unheard we, of. That's unheard of now. Absolutely. And they said that we're going to talk about every subject. There will be no taboo subject at the exception of racism, xenophobia, and anti-Semitism. My father said, I don't have room for hate. I don't have room for anybody that come here and, do, and, and put the baggage of hate in this mm. house. We don't want that. Mm. Wow. We can talk about everything. We can disagree, but never in violence. We have to discuss. My father always used to say, your ultimate weapon is your brain. Mm -hmm. You can challenge any human being. Your skin color is not about the question. It's how you present yourself, how you tell the person that is being stupid. Mm -hmm. Do you realize you've been stupid? <laughs> Most of the time when people, don't, people are racist, racist against me, all, all I have to say to them, I tell them, excuse me for being alive and a human being. Mm -hmm. yeah. You yeah. have a problem with that? Yeah. That is your problem. I don't have a problem with wow. you. So we have to get away all those stigma, black people this, white people that. Mm -hmm. It's not about skin color is what we are able to bring to one another and if we don't remove the conversation from race to what we can we have in common and how we can put our skills and resources together yeah. mm -hmm. to give to the young generation that is coming perspective of to fight for their own future not to give it away and join ISIS and other groups wow. we have been failing the young kids too long mm -hmm. and that's what my book is about mm -hmm. find in my book something that can give you the strength to start your life from scratch 
and to build it up. And that's some of the same yeah. message you give off in your organization. Tell us about your nonprofit work that you're doing. Well, um, my, my foundation, but, but my foundation Batonga, is about secondary education. Mm -hmm. The Millennium, Millennium Development Goal focuses on primary education, yes. mm -hmm. which, in a certain way, with the result of it, we haven't achieved all the goals yet. It has been proven that in Africa, just the primary education reduced child mortality at birth. Mm. But the game changer comes in from secondary to tertiary education. Mm. That's when you have leadership. That's, why, that's when you have entrepreneurship and you transform the continent. Educating girls in, in secondary education, you put a stop into early marriage, mm -hmm. female genital mutilation, uh, poverty, um, sexual abuses, mm. and a lot of things comes out of there because you empower women to understand that they have a role to play in the society. They are not just a daughter of a man mm -hmm. that can marry them off, but they can have a say. And it's proven also that when you educated girls in secondary education and tertiary education, yes. they invest mm -hmm. in the family, Definitely. they invest in their community, and they invest globally. Wow. We're talking about global economy. Mm -hmm. you, invest, you invest in women's education, mm -hmm. the GDP of each country that invests in girls' education rises up. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about capitalism, what are we waiting for yeah. to do that? That's for the country, Amen. for the future. Thank you so well, much. Thank you, and thank you for empowering us with your music and your yes. words. Thank you so much for You're being welcome. here. It's you good are, to see you again. It's so <laughs> good to see you, too. So good to see you. Yes. Good to see you, too, boo. You and next well. time, don't you. get a tail on your butt. No tails. Okay. okay. <laughs> No tail Thank on your you butt. So much. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.